This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Today we focus on the vaquita porpoise, which is on the verge of extinction. The vaquita, I think, is the most beautiful of the seven species of porpoises. It is a species that's only found in the northern Gulf of California, so it has the smallest distribution of any species of porpoise, dolphin, or whale. Dr. Barbara Taylor is with the Southwest Fisheries Science Center. She's the leader of their marine mammal genetics program. And this particular little porpoise is about five feet long, and it has a very nice paint job. It has black mascara and lipstick. It's sort of got a goth look to it and a really nice little smile. But that smile only serves to mask the dire status of the vaquita porpoise in the wild. It's the most endangered marine mammal in the world. We're down to less than 100 individuals. And we are about to lose them unless something drastic is done to eliminate their greatest threat, which is drowning in fishing gill nets. These porpoises live in waters teeming with fish. And of course, highly productive waters are good for fishing. So they have a complete overlap between fishing grounds and the only place that they can make a living themselves. So it's an unfortunate coincidence for the porpoise and the fishermen. But gill nets are not the only way to catch fish. They're just the cheapest way to catch fish. And they entangled hundreds of thousands of dolphins and porpoises every single year in the world. And so the reason that we are facing this problem with vaquita is that they have such a small distribution that is entirely within the range of fishing. Other dolphins have ranges that lie outside of where people fish. But we really need to fish more sustainably and more responsibly. Recently, the president of Mexico went to the small fishing village of San Felipe and announced a two-year ban on gill netting, combined with an increase in enforcement. And during that two years, when there are no gill nets in the water and the fishermen are being paid not to use them, We really hope to push forward in developing alternative fishing gear. And there are some alternative fishing gears that are already available and some that are under development. And that's where we need to move forward if we want to have dolphins and porpoises in our coastal waters. And here is where consumers enter this story. By asking for vaquita-friendly fish, the fishermen in the Gulf of California will have an incentive to use alternatives to gill nets, such as traps. About 80% of the most lucrative fishery in the northern Gulf, which is for blue shrimp, is in the United States. And so people are unwittingly causing the extinction of this species. But right now, there isn't the option to choose vaquita-friendly shrimp on the menu. Barbara is hoping that with this two-year gillnet ban, the markets for vaquita-friendly shrimp from Mexico can be developed. The consumers, the restaurateurs, and the buyers all need to work together to change how we deal with seafood. And fortunately, we have some incredibly progressive people on all fronts in California. It's one of the reasons why I think this can really work. We've sort of made what I think is that first critical step of, okay, now we've got the enforcement in Mexico, We've got this two-year gillnet ban. At least for those two years, we know that we're going to be getting vaquita-friendly seafood product. Now we can develop those market chain links. We can educate people as to what a vaquita is and that the choice that they make on the menu can really make a difference. And all of those things, from the consumer to the chefs to the seafood buyers and to the fishermen, all have to be linked up and traceable. And we have the technology to do that now. And I'm very optimistic the next two years will make a lot of progress. And my thanks to Dr. Barbara Taylor. And here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Help spread the word about vaquita and be aware of where your seafood comes from and how it's caught. I'm Jerry Kay.